Last year, Alan Wiseman put out this really cool book called The World Without Us. And in it, he proposed this crazy idea. What if human beings just <laughs> disappeared? What would happen to the planet if we all got up, like Wally, I guess, and just went to Mars? Well, it turns out that our buildings wouldn't do very well. Without mankind constantly taking care of them and constantly pumping energy into them, they'd very quickly fall apart. Bridges would collapse, monuments would tumble, our subways would flood because nobody would be pumping water out of them anymore. Very quickly, nature would regain control. And this to me is an indication that we've been building the wrong way. This to me shows me that we need to rethink our idea of building and our idea of nature and connect the two much more fluently. Because if not, it's going to put us all towards this inevitable path towards destruction and extinction. Look how glum every... Cheer up, it gets better. God. But there are things that should be extinct, right? Things that are going extinct, and it's fine. They say the incandescent light bulb, that'll be extinct by 2010. Ashtrays, because everybody smokes outside, they'll be extinct by 2015. The printed phone book by 2020. Skinny people by 2025. <laughs> I hate, I hate skinny people. And of course, oil, whether we like it or not, is all, it's gone by 2035. Now that's fine. Even the little venerable newspaper, well, that'll, that'll hold on till 2050, they say. But what about the things that are going to be extinct that we don't want to be extinct? Things that are going away that we, you know, need. Just unintended consequences of our way of life. Things like the polar ice caps, gone by 2020. The cute little polar bear will rip you to shreds by 2020 also. All of our wood by 2035. All of our fresh water by 2035. And all of our fresh air by 2040. These are things we need, don't we? But at the rate we're going, this is what's going to happen. But so far to date, the best argument I've seen against global warming, the best argument I've heard to rally people together and do something about the climate crisis is this one. If we don't do something, all of our Reese's are going to melt. And that's important. Gandhi said that you must be the change you wish to see in the world. And that is my homework assignment for all of you, even you drunk people in the back. All of you must, from this day forward, you're all knighted. Congratulations, you're all knighted as green designers. And from this day forward, all of your projects are going to have to take responsibility for themselves. And if you don't know how to start, I'll help you. And I can introduce you to hundreds of other people that can. You're in a room full of people that will help you. But that's what we need to do. That being said, uh, I just want to show you a bunch of materials because I know most of you are designers and you're probably interested in this kind of thing. First and foremost, there's this crap that you've seen before. As I explained to our clients, it's not wood. It looks like wood, but it's not wood. Get it? And they don't get it. Another non-wood grass is bamboo. You've all seen bamboo before, maybe not like this. This is Neapolitan woven bamboo, which is kind of like zebra wood. We love cork, but this is a cork mosaic, and we do the dots in different sizes. It's great on curves, which we do a lot of. We do them for shower floors, believe it or not, because they're non-skid with the grout. It's kind of cool. There's uh, alchemy, which is 100% uh, recycled scraps of aluminum set into a resin for countertops. 100% recycled sinks from a leak. This is uh, all aluminum. Three-dimensional wallpaper made from 100% recycled pulp board. Of course, recycled glass from ice stone and vitrazo. You've hopefully all seen that before. Countertops made from this from bamboo. This is Ecotop, which goes really well with Curie, as you might see. And then we've discovered that it's silly to build non-load-bearing walls, so we don't build non-load-bearing walls anymore. We put up this. This is called orange peel. It's really just a stretch uh, fabric that makes kind of an inst instant wall partition. And you can print on it anything you want, so you can change it out and do whatever you want, and it's a lot less embodied energy than a, than a whole wall. Three-dimensional woven wall covering, this from uh, Plybu. This is a, um, a seed uh, fruit pits that have been sanded and put into a floor, which creates kind of an acupressure as you walk on it, which is kind of cool. These are little LED lights that we use for stair nosings from eyelids, and I don't know if you can see the URL there. Organic textiles from Lulon, which also supports uh, green collar jobs and third world economies. Now just think about the future we could create. Think about a future of truly organic buildings. Buildings that grow out of their landscape. Buildings that as you walk on the floor, it doesn't wear away a pattern, but it calluses and becomes stronger. 
buildings that if you take a picture hook out of the wall, it doesn't leave a hole, but it heals. Imagine the potential of truly organic buildings, and luckily that's where we're headed. That being said, my time is up. I want to thank you all. You can download this from that address there. If not, give me your business card and I'll mail it to you. But thank you all for listening, and thanks to the drunk people in the back.